Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. Devotional focus verse. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Ezekiel 37, 3. Recently, I came across an old photo showing an ancient Native American burial site located on Memelus Island in the Columbia River, east of Hood River, Oregon. The site was literally covered with dry bones. The photo had been taken during construction of the Bonneville Dam before the bones were carefully removed and interred elsewhere. I learned from subsequent research that the name Memelus is derived from the Chinook Indian word Memelust, which means to die. In the 1800s, the Indian tribes of the Columbia River did not bury their dead. Instead, they wrapped the bodies in mats or furs and placed them in the woods, on rocky points, or on islands like Memelus. The Corps of Discovery, under the command of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, went by the island on October 29, 1805, in their quest to reach the Pacific Ocean. On their homeward journey, the explorers visited the island, and Lewis noted in his diary, Thirteen sepulchres on this rock, which stands near the center of the river, and has a surface of about two acres above high water mark. They named the spot Sepulcher Island. Seeing the historical photo of the dry bones on Memelus Island helped me visualize the valley of dry bones that Ezekiel saw, and to consider just how impossible it would be in the natural for those bones to come alive again. Only God could cause that to happen. The dry bones in Ezekiel's vision represented the scattered Israelites in captivity and the vision took place at a time when hope for the restoration of Israel was almost non-existent. Historically, an initial fulfillment of this prophecy occurred when Israel was restored after 70 years in Babylonian captivity. A further fulfillment took place much later, when Israel was re-established as a nation in 1948, after nearly 2,000 years of dispersion. Notice that Ezekiel's vision was in two parts. First, the dry bones came together and the sinews and flesh were restored, though the slain were still dead. Then God breathed into them the breath of life and they became a living, vibrant army. This reminds us that God is not yet done with Israel. Today, the nation exists and enjoys remarkable military and economic strength. Spiritually speaking, however, the nation as a whole is still dead in trespasses and sin. However, we know the day will come when those who are left of God's chosen people will truly accept their Messiah. We can also apply this vision of restoration to ourselves. If we have strayed away from God and are dead spiritually, there is hope. If we turn wholeheartedly to Him, he will restore us as He did the dry bones. Even if we are serving the Lord, we may feel there is a lack of progress in our spiritual walk and that we need revival. Is that possible? Taking Ezekiel 37, 3 through 5 as a promise, the answer is a definite yes. As we reach out to God in faith and are quick to do whatever He lays on our hearts, He will breathe new life into us. Let us claim this promise today. Background Information Ezekiel's account in this chapter, which illustrates the promise of restoration described in the previous chapters, is one of six Ezekiel narratives containing the phrase, The hand of the Lord was upon me, or similar language. On each occasion, these words signal that the Lord's personal appearance, action, or intervention was imminent. The location of the open valley full of dry bones referenced in verse 2 is not given. It was open in that it was not hid from view or shaded from the heat of the sun. In addition, 
The bones were unburied and thus fully exposed on the surface of the ground. Perhaps because of that, as well as the passage of time, they were thoroughly dried out. No tissue, sinew, or hair remained. According to verse 11, the bones were those of Israelites who had been slain. Since the law and Jewish culture were meticulous regarding treatment of dead bodies, this sight likely was disturbing to Ezekiel. However, he did not speak until the Lord asked him a question. The word noise in verse 7 can also be translated as voice, so the sound Ezekiel heard may not have been that of bones coming together, but rather the voice of the Lord prompting the resurrection of the slain. Since these bones were not in graves, this voice prompted raising of the dead, along with the open your graves references in verses 12 and 13, foreshadows a future resurrection that would apply to the whole house of Israel. When the Lord told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, the prophet was only responsible for accurately communicating the word of the Lord. He was not responsible for the assembling of the bones, organizing the army, or cleanup of the valley. The Lord himself gathered together an exceeding great army from the dry bones. Verse 14 indicates that when the Lord placed this army back in their own land, they would be a witness to all people that he had done the work. Conclusion Ezekiel's message to the dry bones brought hope and encouragement for the people of Israel. It helps us understand that God can bring life even to those who seem hopelessly dead in trespasses and sin. Ezekiel Chapter 37 The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and, behold, there were very many in the open valley, and, lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord.